Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Professor Sides, and this course is Principles of Macroeconomics. This is Chapter 11, Measuring the Cost of Living. This is the second installment of our lecture series for this chapter, and we're going to talk through, again, CPI, a Consumer Price Index. If you will remember from the previous lecture, we talked about what it is, Consumer Price Index, um, how it is calculated, the five steps to calculating CPI, and how we use CPI, Consumer Price Index, for um, as an indicator and as a measurement for how much does it cost to live in an economy. And then we also use it, comparatively speaking, to see rise and fall in, in, in inflation rates. Excuse me. When we speak about um, CPI, CPI is like GDP. It is an economic indicator, but it is not necessarily the best indicator. And so this lecture, this portion of the lecture, we're going to speak about the problems with uh, CPI measurement. There are three types, and we're going to look at all three of the types and then compare CPI to the GDP deflator. The first problem that we have with CPI is something called the substitution bias. And what we, if you will remember from reading the chapter in the textbook, what you will find is that the CPI or Consumer Price Index basically measures the goods and services that a typical consumer or a typical household would purchase within a, a given time frame, which is generally a year. Unlike GDP, household spending um, for GDP is for all domestic um, products. And then imports are, are, are included with the net exports. With CPI, we look at all of it, imports and exports that a household, a typical household would, um, would purchase. So for example, when you buy a pair of Italian leather um, shoes, gentlemen, or ladies, you buy a, um, a, a foreign designer's gown for an event, that would not necessarily get counted under household or under consumption for GDP. It may get considered a part of net, imp net exports, but it would not be considered or counted as part of consumption. In CPI, because you bought it in your household, it would get counted. And so when we talk about substitution bias, what we're looking at is the fact that when in step one, when the Bureau of Labor and Statistics are fixing the basket, determining what goods and services you a typical consumer would purchase, when they are making that, they are also, and then they fix, they get the set the price, they find the price. The price that they choose for that product might not be the same price you pay for it. For example, if they choose a pair of $125 pair of jeans and you pay 29 you go to a flight store a retail chain where you can buy your jeans for $29 then that would overstate the CPI would be overstated because they did not factor in that you would operate as a rational consumer and buy the least expensive the lesser of the two so their calculations would include 125 when in actuality you bought, you paid maybe 25 or 35 dollars for the jeans so you substituted the good that they chose with a different good that's a substitution bias that's not counted or factored in the CPI um, calculation. The second problem that we have in calculating CPI is the introduction of new goods. When we have new goods entering into the market for whatever reason, technology, innovations, or um, what, what have you, those do not immediately get counted in the basket because they were new goods. Case in point, uh, this summer I was able to go and visit family in New York City. And during my touristy day, I had an opportunity to walk down Wall Street. As I'm walking, I approach a gentleman who's walking his dog and he's wearing a pair of what I think are Google Glass glasses. I stopped him, I asked him, and in fact, he's wearing the Google Glasses. Now. I'm a techie girl and I like, if it's lights, bells, and whistles, I love it. 
So we talked for about 15, 20 minutes about the pros and cons of having it since he was a beta, beta tester. And um, should Google continue in their research and development and introduce it to the market overall? In that year that it is introduced, it would not get considered um, or counted in the basket for CPI because it's a new good. Now, years later, it would possibly be considered, but not in the first year because it's a new good. And likewise, what we saw in other new products, such as the smartphone, such as tablets when they were first introduced, such as computers when they were first introduced, the year in which they were introduced, we don't count that. In, it's not counted in CPI because it's a new good. The third and final problem with CPI is unmeasured quality change. So if we have, um, if we have, a, 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 for example, a box in the past, cereal came in boxes and you can either open up this box and there's cereal in it or you open up a box and there's a bag and the bag inside the bag was two thirds of the bag was filled with cereal. As we've become more ecologically friendly, we've moved from boxes for excessive packaging to now bags. And so, and then when you open up the bag, it's instead of it being two thirds filled, because you know, if it's filled all the way to the top and you open the bag, the contents spill, it, we go from two thirds of filled to a half of a bag being filled. And so um, that change uh, is not factored in. And so the price stays the same. And so we keep counting it, even though the quality has changed. Now, why is this important? The reason why these problems with the problems that we, these three problems pose a problem. Um, one is because it poses a problem in calculation. And why is this important? Because many policies, many programs are dependent upon the accuracy of the CPI. Um, case in point, social security and transfer payments, the poverty, um, how we um, adjust for poverty, um, uh, cost of living for those who are working, cost of living um, as far as wages and wage increase are determined based on the accuracy of the calculation for consumer price index. Now let's look at the difference between CPI and GDP and the GDP deflator. Remember the GDP deflator was from our previous chapter, chapter 10, and we talked about um, how that how the GDP deflator is um, deflates the GDP so we have a sense of realness um, and so now we're going to look at what's the difference between CPI consumer price index and the GDP index which is the GDP deflator first and foremost we need to understand um, imported consumer goods uh, again as I had used as the example if you are buying something that was made in China, made in Mexico, made in uh, Guatemala, uh, made in Honduras, that those goods and services would be included in CPI. They would not be necessarily be included in GDP or the GDP deflator. And then um, again, by definition, capital goods or goods that are bought by businesses are not included. In, a C, in CPI because CPI is based on the typical household and typical households would not buy capital goods. But it would be included in a GDP because it was produced domestically. And then with um, CPI, the CPI is a fixed basket that is changed over time, whereas GDP is everything that is produced domestically within that year. So CPI, because they use a fixed basket, they don't include new goods that are introduced and GDP, but GDP does. That concludes this segment of the lecture. I look forward to speaking with you on the next se segment.